Hi, I'm Shannon, and in this video I'm going to be giving you some tips on how to take care of oily skin. Oily skin can contribute to acne, and it can also just be plain irritating when you're trying to wear makeup, and by the end of the day, it's all slipping and sliding all over your face. Now, what causes oily skin? Oily skin is a result of an excess of sebum on the skin. Your skin comprises of sebaceous glands. Sebum is meant to lubricate and protect your sebaceous glands. When your sebaceous glands produce too much sebum, this can result in oily skin, clogged pores, blackheads, and acne. Oily skin is dictated largely by hormones. This is why during periods of surging hormones, your skin can end up more oily, such as when you're a teenager. Also, periods of hormonal fluctuations can tend to change your skin type, such as during pregnancy or menopause as well. Typically, high levels of androgens are associated with more oily skin. Because your skin type is largely to do with hormones, this means that there might not be much in the way of changing your skin type. As you grow older, as your age changes, as your hormones begin to level out, you will experience changes in your skin type and the level of oil that you produce. Take heart, oily skin can largely be considered youthful. Sebum can also have, you know, protective benefits and the fatty acid composition can also be helpful to skin. So you have that at least. It can be very tempting if you have oily skin to use very drying, astringent cleansers, but I would suggest using a non-stripping cleanser. When I was younger and I struggled with oily skin, I used to use a lot of antibacterials, a lot of scrubs, and over time I realized that, you know, after washing my skin, I was I had a very tight feeling in my skin. That's because it was very stripping to my skin. And over time I realized that this was doing a lot more damage and irritation to my skin. And it was aggravating it. Aggravating your skin can cause it to produce more oiliness. So I would suggest using a gentle cleanser, non-foaming, non-fragranced. And don't be too harsh on your skin. Even things like Clarisonics, if you're using them maybe twice a day, that can also be quite aggravating to your skin. So just be gentle on it. Make sure that you're rinsing off all the cleanser as well and not leaving any residue on your skin. Another tip is to use salicylic acid. Salicylic acid, as we know, is oil soluble. This will help to remove all the sebum and waxy substances inside your pores. It can help to dissolve the buildup in your pores and keep your pore lining nice and free of blockages. Salicylic acid can actually also change the fatty acid composition of the sebum. So if you have quite thick oil, it can help to normalize that a bit more. While you don't need to be using really grainy, harsh scrubs on your skin, you do need to be exfoliating just to keep everything moving along and just unplugged and not blocked in your pores. Salicylic acid is a great chemical exfoliant for this purpose. It can help to slow away dead skin cells. It can help to prevent blockages and prevent blackheads, and it can help to keep any breakouts under control. Tip number three, use a mattifying or gel moisturizer, or you could also go with hydrating serums. If you have oily skin, you might be tempted to skip the step of moisturizing. However, it's important for your skin to replenish its protective substances and to also protect its skin barrier. A mattifying moisturizer or lightweight serum can also help to replenish all these substances and they can provide adequate moisturization without leaving you feel like a greasy mess. You might not necessarily want to reach for facial oils for moisturization. The skin might not need that extra oil over its pores. So opt for a mattifying or gel moisturizer instead. Ingredients like hyaluronic acid help to attract moisture to the skin and will help to keep your skin hydrated without the heaviness. Now I've heard some people say that your skin will be tricked into producing less oil if you apply oil to it. If this was the case, then dry skin would probably not be dry and oily skin would just need oil and it's, it's not necessarily true. It can encourage oily skin people to reach for maybe occlusive moisturizers that might end up feeling too heavy on the skin and potentially clogging it. Your skin essentially needs hydration and moisture, much like your body, and ingredients that will help to replenish the skin, antioxidants and vitamins and minerals. A serum can easily fit this bill without having to use such heavy moisturizers on the surface. 
If you really deal with oily skin, it can be helpful to use masks with things like clay and charcoal in them to help to remove impurities, absorb excess oil, and it can help to greatly reduce the shine and oil that you feel, especially to help prep your skin for makeup. Makeup does not typically last as well on oily skin at times because oils can tend to break down makeup. In order to prevent this, you're going to want to blot before you apply any makeup to your skin and maybe after you've done your skincare. Then apply your pore filling or mattifying primer and blot again, depending on how oily your skin is. Then apply a light dusting of the translucent powder before you apply your foundation. I know it can seem daunting to apply a powder before your liquid foundation, but it really does work if you have oily skin. Go easy on it, but it will really help to absorb that excess oil and to help to add that extra layer of protection throughout the day. Go for an oil-free foundation. You know, oils can tend to break up oils. So throughout the day, your oily skin will break up your foundation if it contains oil in it. This is why oil cleansing is a thing. Mineral foundations actually look beautiful on skin and it can actually kind of melt into your skin throughout the day and mix with your natural oils so as not to look cakey. However, compact powders can tend to cake up a lot quicker during the day. There are some great liquid foundations out there as well that provide great coverage and great protection for your skin throughout the day that won't be broken down by your oils. Fenty Beauty Soft Filter Foundation is a matte foundation that's great for oily skin, as is Estee Lauder Double Wear, Urban Decay do a great one, so do cover effects. So make sure you're shopping around to find the best foundation for your skin type. Once you've applied your foundation, you want to add more powder. Don't go too heavy with the powder and, you know, baking, I'm not a huge fan of it, honestly. It can really just emphasize all the cracks in your skin and the wrinkles that you don't actually have. Honestly, that much product can also clog your pores. Embrace the shine in certain places. I'm not a huge fan of overly matte skin, so it's nice to have just a little dewy glow here and there and just blot the areas that you wouldn't want the glow. You can use a powder puff and just dip it in the powder and just blot and roll over the skin, but don't envelope the skin in this huge veil of powder. It can be super drying and it's just not good for your skin. Now for oily eyelids, it's the same deal. You can actually blot your eyelids, apply some powder, blot it again, and then go in with your eyeshadows. Also, if you have oily skin, you might tend to be prone to having those panda eyes where your mascara starts running. What you want to do is just powder your eyelashes before applying your mascara. Just coat them in a thin veil of powder and this will help your mascara from running. I hope you found this video helpful on how to take care of oily skin. If you have any oily skin tips of your own, please leave them in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel for more skincare videos and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you for watching.